Right, thanks for taking the time to watch another video. I am JD Ramirez. This is the eighth part of my 10 part top 10 reasons why Jesus is the God man, countering the Jehovah's Witness perspective on who Jesus is. So, number eight is Jesus the Great I Am. Why is this such a big deal? Well, we see in John 8 24, and we'll come back to this passage, but where Jesus said to the Pharisees, I told you you would die. In your sins for unless you believe that I am you will die in your sins well in the modern translations it says I am he and but that's not what the Greek says we need to figure out what this I am means and what what Jesus was talking about to the Pharisees when he says unless you believe I am you will die in your sins it seems like a pretty important thing to Jesus so I want it to be a pretty important thing to me and my theology well how do we figure that out well let's go back to the Old Testament and try to figure that out. We see when Moses is on the mountain talking to God through the burning bush, uh, says, Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers sent me to you, and they ask, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord which is Yahweh, which means he is uh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. So this is where we're getting this I am verbiage. Okay, This is fascinating that uh, Corey Bacher notes on his uh, Knowing the Bible website, kind of the roots of this word. So Moses is there, he's saying, who should I say sent you? I am that I am. Um, however, it could be awkward that Moses would go to the Israelites and, and Pharaoh and say, I am sent me. So in Exodus 3.15, he revises his phrase and changes it to the third person and says, tell them that he is, has sent you. And he is comes from the Hebrew word haya. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, which means to be. It is the third person formless word, he is. And that becomes the name Yahweh. So this is fascinating. Pause this. Take take time to read this section here about where the word Yahweh comes from or versus Jehovah. Uh, Jehovah is a made up word by the um, German theologians, which they're just trying to get at Yahweh. So let's dig a little bit further in. So we get back to this. Why is the I am a big deal? Well, we already mentioned this because you'll die in your sins without it. But then it goes even further in John 8 58 where Jesus said to them truly truly I say to you before Abraham was so you see Jesus's pre-existence here I am this ego me okay so ego me again comes from it is the Greek and Jesus is using the same verbiage that is in the Septuagint which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures and he is using that verbiage that they're using in that day and applying it to himself so this is such a powerful statement that when Jesus said this, the Pharisees picked up stones to throw at him because they believed he was blaspheming. So ask yourself, why did they want to kill him? Well, because he was claiming to be the God man. I also think about when the guards came to arrest Jesus and they, they said, who are you? they said, who are you looking for? We're looking for Jesus, they said, and Jesus said, you got it, I am. And they fell back at the power of that name. They fell back onto the ground. Uh, we also see another example of John using this about Jesus. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am. Again, this ego on me. And we see this in Isaiah 43, 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe and understand that I am, or I am he. Before me no God was formed, neither shall there be after me. Now, this is fascinating because this is the verse actually where the Jehovah's Witnesses get their name, Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's actually a proof text that undermines uh, their theology. And so how do these two verses connect? Well, obviously you got the I am and the I am here, but you see that Dr. James White notes from his book, The Forgotten Trinity, that, and I highly recommend that book, that there seems to be a direct 
connection between the Septuagint and Jesus' usage of egoimi when one removes extraneous words such as the phrase that connects the last clause to the first and compares these two passages, the result is, well, it's the identical uh, Greek language here, Greek uh, construction of the sentence here. So that's just fascinating that the, the connection that John was using between the Old Testament and the New Testament when he's trying to tell us that the God-man came to save us. So we see again, look up these verses. You got 824 in John, 858, and the rest of these verses here in the book of John also clearly show that the beloved apostle wanted the world to understand that Jesus was not a mere man. He wanted us to know that Jesus is the God-man, the great I Am, or Yahweh, from the Old Testament. One God, three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, eternally distinct. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, even the centers are welcome. Check out our channel for us sharing the gospel on the streets, college campuses, and check out the full presentation of uh, my top 10 reasons why Jesus is the God-man, proving the Trinity to the Jehovah's Witnesses should be floating on the screen right now. May God richly bless you.